you can see today we uh, called our lesson Kingdom Overview. It's always tough to uh, pick a lesson when you have several prepared ahead. And I had this one in, in my thought train and uh, Lynn said some things last week that go right along with this. You, you might remember last week was uh, the eyewitness testimony of Simon and he got into the kingdom. And uh, he had several slides on the kingdom and that there would be some standing here that would not taste of death till that kingdom came. So uh, I felt it was good timing, blended right in with that, and, and I wanted to talk about it. Certain people, I wanted to hear it and, uh, again, have it recorded for, for others in the future. Well, there's many views about the kingdom or what is the kingdom. And some would say the kingdom of God doesn't exist yet. Or that it some already exists, say it already exists. Or that some would say it's going to be an earthly kingdom, a, a king on an earthly throne. Others say a heavenly kingdom, a heavenly kingdom. So what we want to do today is look at a few statements in the Bible. You'll be able to take them or anyone listening to this and see what the Bible says. And then uh, you can draw your conclusions based on scripture of what you think about the nature of the kingdom of God. As we begin looking at this in John 1 1, the New Testament, John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. <clears throat> so, this being with God in the beginning, not one there, at least two. And we got here. I put it on our time, word in the beginning. <clears throat> this word was in the beginning, and we see immediately there's this Godhead. We have a verse, it's kind of neat. Uh, John starts his book with in the beginning, and the Bible in Genesis starts with in the beginning. Genesis 1 says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Later on down that same chapter, he said, let us, God said that, let us make man in our image. So we see that word it came from. It's just interesting. It's a plural word. That Elohim, the original word, it's plural. And we see there was this father. As we look more into the scriptures, we see there's this father. There's this son. And we find out later there's a Holy Spirit. And uh, we won't go into great detail of that today. But we see this from the beginning. Matter of fact, the word Trinity there, which there's arguments in the religious world. So I'm not liking that word, uh, Trinity, but we do see the concept is scriptural of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, especially at Jesus' baptism. You see that drawn out. So we have this word in the beginning, and it doesn't seem too long down the timeline. We have this happen in Genesis chapter 3. We don't know how long it went with Adam and Eve there, but uh, Genesis 3:13. Lord said to the woman, what is this that you've done? So they'd been told to only eat of the, the tree of life, not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, that they were allowed to eat of the tree of life, but she's deceived, isn't she? And, and sins. The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, cursed to you above all livestock, above all beasts of the field, on your belly you shall go. And dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. And I'm going to pop on the timeline here that a Savior is coming. Messiah is coming. Already, we're starting to see in the Bible, Genesis 3, about this kingdom and this great ruler that will be coming. And we might call this here the fall. Sometimes we'd call this the fall of man. Well, as we continue on, we're jumping back in John 1 there. We see John 1 a little later down. John 1, 14 said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So we have here on our timeline the Word, the Son, became flesh. And we might say this started off with a baby in Bethlehem, didn't it? A baby in Bethlehem. And that up there is actually a manger from 
the first century. Now it was it was indoors. It could have been wood. We don't know, but it's also possible that manger was this bunch of block here. And uh, no matter what, we know it wasn't too extravagant, was it? Too fancy. Jesus was in a manger that you fed livestock in. And I was thinking about us feeding cows. We would take the oldest rottenest boards, just nail them together with some big old nails, and kick them out in the mud. That was how you fed the animals. So. Uh, you know, not the fanciest thing. A feed trough is where the word became flesh. You know, in the Bible, too, many things happening. But Daniel 2, you might recall that that great king of Babylon had a dream, didn't he? And more getting to be known about this kingdom. It says, as Daniel's interpreting that dream or telling him about it, Daniel 2, 44, in the days of those kings. See, we have that big statue up there that he dreamed about. There's a head of gold and there's silver and bronze or brass and there's iron and all these representing kingdoms we find out from that dream. And Daniel 2, 4, 4, in the days of those kings, getting down towards the bottom here where it was a mix of iron and clay, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. Well, that's what we're concerned about today. In the days of those kings, a kingdom is going to be set up, and it will never be destroyed. Nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. So again, we're, we're seeing here as we look at this, great Babylon was going to fall. The Medes and Persians are going to fall, and Greece and Rome and things of this nature and a, a mixed kingdom was going to fall and we're going to see this this stone come in this kingdom that it represented and if you will topple it and it'll stand forever this great kingdom that comes in so we put on our timeline kingdom arrives kingdom arrives but when when would the messiah begin his reign things of that nature well Let's look at that verse that Lynn had last week. When Jesus was talking in Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus makes it about as clear in the Bible here as anywhere you're going to find. There's a lot of clarity in other things, but this one makes it very clear if the Bible student will pay attention and think about it and meditate. Don't take what other people are saying. What does this say? Matthew 16, 24, Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What shall man give in return for his soul? The Son of Man is going to come with his angels and the glorious Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he's done. Truly, Jesus said, verily, for sure, I, Jesus said to you, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We're going to highlight that. Now, there might be people twist that and try to say it means something else that it doesn't mean about these people not dying or they might try to twist it and say, well, maybe these people were resurrected and their life was longer. No. What Jesus is saying to a normal group of disciples or crowd there, he says, some of you right here, just like in the science, he might say, you know, some of you will not taste the death. You will not die until you see the kingdom come. It's going to come in your lifetime. That's exactly what it said here. <clears throat> so, uh, here we are, aren't we? 30 to 33 AD. There's all this dating stuff that we're not worried about. There might be a four-year calendar problem there. But somewhere around 30 to 33 AD, Jesus is saying this stuff. You guys are going to be alive when the king comes. So we pop this up here. Clean back in Moses' time, <clears throat> average lifespan only 70. Well, we'll be generous. 110, 120. Years, see how that we're saying somebody living here, even if they lived 110, 120 years, I mean, clean out to 143 AD. I mean, that's being, that's being, if you will, pessimistic. 
That's, a, that's the farthest I could be. It has got to happen somewhere between here and about there in their lifespan. Okay? That's when the kingdom of God came in that time span, according to Scripture. So let's see here. Look at this. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, Acts 2 1, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind that filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see here Acts 2, don't we? Acts 2 is what we start to see here. And we see the day of Pentecost. We see the day of Pentecost happening. And I believe even Lynn mentioned this last week that before that day, the scripture had always talked future tense. The, the kingdom is coming. Even Matthew 16 we just read. It's going to come. You'll be here when it comes. It's future. And that was, there you are, Matthew 16, 28. But from thereafter, when we look in scripture, we see statements showing it in the past. The kingdom is here. Colossians 1.13, and we'll look at that probably again in a second, but he's transferred us into the kingdom. It doesn't exist. No, it exists. And he's transferred people into the kingdom. The kingdom exists. Now, some people teach, and you need to be aware of this as Bible students, those that might be listening, that, yeah, Christ wanted to set up that kingdom, but he failed. That's what some teach. They will, they will be teaching that it is not here, despite what Jesus said, that you'll not taste the death that's here. He failed, they say. Failed to establish the kingdom. Uh, some teach that the church that we have is like, a, if you will, a stopgap measure, a, a, a plug in the hole to fix what he wasn't able to do, that he was not able to fulfill his eternal plan. But we see John 6, 1 through 15. Let's see what happens here in John 6, 1 through 15. I'm going to read here what we see happening in Jesus' life. And look, this, this is earlier on. This is not even towards the end, end of the ministry. This is early in his ministry. <clears throat> John 6, service 1. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing with the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain. There he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, is at hand, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him. Jesus said to Philip, uh, where are we to buy bread so that these can eat? And he said this to test them, for he knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread would not uh, be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Petersburg, said to him, there's a little boy who has five barley lo loaves, two fish, but well, what are they among so many? <clears throat> Jesus said, have the people sit down, and there was much grass in the place. The, the men sat down, about 5,000 number. Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks, distributed to them that were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. <laughs> as much as they wanted. When they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing will be lost. They gathered them up, filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves that, that they had eaten. <clears throat> when the people saw the sign that had been done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is coming into the world. Perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, or to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So here we see from that verse, perceiving they were going to come and take him by force. Was Jesus rejected and unable to make his kingdom? No. There were large crowds, many, 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 who were going to take him and set him on the throne. We don't care if you don't want to be king. You're going to be king because what were they looking at? Physical things, fleshly things. You can make bread, you can heal the sick. We can have the greatest earthly kingdom we ever had with you as the king on the earth. But Jesus, perceiving that, passed through their midst, didn't he? Going to take him by force and make him king. That's clean back there, even before 33 AD. He already had people behind him. He would have had a force 
of people to make him king. Passed through their midst. He didn't let it happen. And again, why not let him do it? <laughs> why didn't Jesus let him do it? Then? Here's his kingdom. He could have had it. Well, here's why. Not an earthly kingdom, right? That's what they needed to see. That's what we want people nowadays to see, that Jesus' kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. Pilate talking to him here in John 18. Pilate enters the headquarters says, Are you the king of the Jews? John 18, 33. Jesus said, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others tell you this about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation, the chief priests, have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. We'll stop reading there, but uh, we see the world, and we'll act, it's not of this world. It's not a physically kingdom. And we know that even today our politicians, our government, confused about, if you will, the, the throne of Israel, the physical, where David used to sit in Jerusalem, confused. And Jesus, that's my, th my kingdom is not of this world. That's why he didn't let them uh, take him by force. That had nothing to do with his kingdom sitting on an earthly throne. Not it at all. So a bunch of incorrect teaching about this kingdom. He couldn't set it up. That the kingdom's not here yet. That he's going to set on an earthly throne. And we get into Revelation and we won't spend any time. Very confusing. But people take verses, prophetic, apocalyptic language and Try to make it literal and say he's going to reign a thousand years sitting on that throne and error, not, not what that stuff was talking about. And they talk about multiple resurrections when the Bible says there's an hour coming. They that have done good and they that have done evil will come forth. And on and on it goes about this error. What we want you to know is from that simple statement that Jesus had in Matthew 16, the kingdom is here. And one would think we could say this was basic principles or elementary principles, but it seems not to be. We have the majority of the religious world confused about the nature of the kingdom of God or what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom is here. Colossians 1.9, for example. Colossians 1.9, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will, all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his blood son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, so we can see here, clean back here in 6062, uh, uh, Colossians, you're being transferred to the kingdom. Not only that, clean back here, 53, 1 Corinthians 420, the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. It consisted, it was there back in the 50s. And again, I pose you, it was here by the day of Pentecost, coming with power with tongues and Holy Spirit baptism and those disciples or apostles standing up and teaching in other languages. Jesus had said about this kingdom, so I'll build my church, didn't he? Back in Matthew 16, <coughs> in that same area of scripture, in that same area of scripture about the kingdom coming, Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter replied, you're the Christ. You know, who, who do you say I am? Or what do people say I am? <laughs> you're the son of the living God. Jesus answered him, said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. I tell you, you're Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. And he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'll give you the keys of the king of heaven. <clears throat> Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So we're seeing the kingdom and the church being used in sentences here very close together. 
And Peter, he's saying, I'm building this church and I'm going to give you keys to kingdom. You know, Peter, you apostles, whatever you bind will be bound. Heaven and earth and whatever loose will be loosed. Heaven and earth, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. If you will, through the church. You know, so it will be Peter. Don't have time today. Didn't think about it until I was here. But, you know, a misunderstanding of Peter being what the church is built on. And what Jesus is saying is, it's built on me. I'm the rock. The, your statement that I'm the Christ. That's what the church is built on. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So when we start looking at that kingdom, what we find is it's Christ's kingdom, isn't it? It's Christ's church. It's Christ's body, we might say. Uh, he's at the right hand of God reigning. Remember when Stephen looked up in Acts 6, 7? He saw the Son of Man like sitting or standing at the right hand of God. He, I pose to Jesus as his scepter, things of that nature. It's what we were calling the kingdom of God. It's what we're talking about here. And Christ is the head of that, isn't he? There are verses that show us about the church, his body, this kingdom, that he is the head of the church. Christians are the body. That's us. We're making up this church, this kingdom. We're composing it. Living stones, people, soul, spirits, living stones composing this body, this church, this kingdom. Christians are the members or the bride of Christ. There are so many verses we could show from the scriptures. Time would not permit. We are citizens of the kingdom. When we become Christians, we're in the body, but we're, we're citizens of the kingdom. Making Christ the king sitting on the throne of our heart and things of that nature. Well, how do you get into it? <laughs> well, it, here's one. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews, Greeks, slave free, we're all made to drink of one spirit. So as we start looking at, if we could convince you the kingdom's here, I want to be part of it. How can I be part of it? Well, there's one verse that says you're baptized into it. Here's another verse, Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, you're baptized into it. Here's another verse. When Nicodemus, so the day is coming, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and Jesus talked to him. John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered him and says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, you know, how can I be an old, be born again? Can a man enter his mother's womb a second time? Jesus said, truly, I truly say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he can't enter the kingdom of God. <clears throat> water and the spirit. Some try to twist that. And it's pretty clear, and as we look at the Bible and washing of G regeneration and things of this, it's pretty clear what baptism, what role it plays, what washing is important in the New Testament church, Christ's church kingdom. And they try to take that away, but it says being born of water and the Spirit, you'll be baptized in church, put on Christ, wash away your sins. There's, he cannot enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the Spirit. I want to pop this slide in here. This was ugly and confusing. So it's just a quick interlude and we'll get back. But here's, here's that Nebuchadnezzar's dream and that, uh, that this all started with. And again, sometime when you're bored, but you know there was the gold and the silver and the brass or the bronze and the iron. And there was this mixed nation. And we were uh, in the last days. And that stone was going to come rolling and bash that, if you will, mixed kingdom. And it would stand forever. Well, that's, that's where we're at, isn't it? Right there at that end in those last days. It will stand forever. And that kingdom that God set up, the church, he's going to deliver it to God. This kingdom that stands forever, he's going to deliver it to God. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 24, then comes the end. And that's what that arrow, look at this, this eternal kingdom that will eventually be delivered up to the Father. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God, 
the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and every power, the last enemy to destroy it is death. Even death and Hades and Satan can't stop this church, this kingdom, from reaching its destination. If you're in the church, in the body, Christian, obeying the Lord, saved, death cannot defeat you. You will be with your Savior forever. So that, that rock, that stone that we saw there, that, that rolled in and smashed that, it's a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, though, isn't it? Some cannot see it. Many cannot see it. It is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who many say he is not the Son of God, he is not the Messiah. Look here. Romans 9.30. We hope we can convince you to quit tripping over the stone and realize Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 9.30. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it. The Gentiles, that would be us, especially back then with the Jews that they were not God's people, if you will. They were not chasing after the law. They didn't seek after righteousness. They attained it. That is a righteousness that is by faith. By faith you could attain this righteousness. But that Israel who pursued the law that would lead to righteousness did not succeed. Israelites, the physical children of Abraham, they were chasing after it and they failed. They didn't succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they didn't pursue it by faith, but as it were, based on works. They were trying to fulfill works of the law to be saved. They have stumbled over the stone of stumbling, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. Very clear that that stone of stumbling was a person, a him. It's Jesus. It's that word that was in the beginning. <clears throat> so that rock that was going to smack in there, that everlasting kingdom was going to be the church that Jesus Christ built. So again, entrance into that kingdom, we've, we, we looked at it on that last slide, but on that first day of Pentecost, when the church began, they were finally pricked in the heart and they realized, hey, this Jesus is that coming Messiah, the Savior, the King of the kingdom. They heard this, Acts 2.37, they were cut to the heart, they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So from Pentecost on, from that first sermon on, this remains unchanged. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. It washes away sins. Add you, the God will add you to church when you do that, and on and on. So we hope that you can see that the spiritual kingdom is here. It is here. Uh, just like Jesus said it was going to be there before they died. Showed up around 33 AD. Christ is reigning. You know, they were mocking him with scepters and smacking him with reeds, but we could still be mocking him if these people were right, but no, he truly has a scepter sitting on the throne. Christ is reigning. And today, can we help you become a citizen? Can you obey the gospel, be baptized, wash away your sins, be added to the kingdom? Can we help you become a king or a citizen of the kingdom is our question for you today. As we stand and sing our song here.